Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and this video is about creating tech documents. This has also been requested on the channel and documentation is also a big part of the responsibility of being a tech professional whether you're entry or senior level. We also have this free short course on the website eastcharmer.com that's called Effective Technical Documentation and this has some more comprehensive videos explaining more about the technical documentation details and we also have activities in here that you can participate in if you want to improve your documentation and we can also check and give feedback on your activities if you plan to submit them so if you check out the website it's free to join if you're interested in learning more about technical documentation so if you're interested in this video please keep on watching and without further ado let's get started documentation is a critical responsibility for tech professionals for several reasons with these reasons tech professionals enhance operational efficiency and enable faster problem resolution for example a tech professional might document network configurations, write user guides for new software, record troubleshooting processes for recurring issues, or maintain inventory records for hardware. Next, let's talk about why documentation is essential in tech. First is it improves team communication and troubleshooting efficiently. Next is it helps in system maintenance and disaster recovery. And last is, it supports compliance, security, and audits. Technical documentation ensures that IT processes, systems, and troubleshooting are understood and maintained efficiently, preventing confusion and errors. Here are the different types of technical documentation. These are some of the most common types of technical documentation we do in the workplace. So let's get started on how to create a proper tech documentation. First is to understand the purpose of the documentation. Before starting, it's essential to understand what you are documenting and for whom. Tech documentation generally serves different audiences such as internal IT teams for system configurations, processes and troubleshooting, and users for instructions on using systems or applications, and management for compliance, auditing, or change management. Next is to gather necessary information. Ensure you have all the relevant details before documenting such as systems or processes, by gathering all configurations, tools, and steps. Technical details, examples are IP address, software versions, device models. Screenshots or logs by capturing necessary screenshots and error messages that help explain steps or processes. And last step is to use a structured format. Following a standardized template ensures consistency and clarity. Here is a basic template structure. You have the title, purpose, tools and software needed, prerequisites and dependencies, if applicable, and step-by-step -step instructions. Here is an example of a documentation template. As you can see, we are following the structured format. We have the title first and then the purpose which is helpful for making system documentation for the internal team. Then we can also add prerequisites like the software they need to install and also the access they are supposed to have. Then we start writing the steps and also adding screenshots are always good to make it easier to explain. After the steps, it's also nice to add a verification method, especially if you are documenting configuration and settings. And also add a troubleshooting method just in case there's an issue with the setup. Here is an example of a documentation for troubleshooting that I wrote at work. It's following a format and this is an example of a troubleshooting guide for our main system. I've added more necessary information like what machines have this installed and also a table for the common issues that we encountered with this system. I use a table to make it easier to find the issue and solution and make it more organized. Here are some best practices when making troubleshooting documentation. Always include the symptoms, root cause, resolution steps, and verification methods. Here's what I wrote for documentation for internal IT team. 
It's an instruction on how to install a special system just in case someone needs to do it next time and if we also forget how to install it. I have the title, Purpose and Steps. Here are some best practices. Use only technical terms when the target audience is familiar just like your internal team. Write concise steps and include visual aids like a screenshot. Okay, so here's what I wrote for users for a doc instructions. I've kept it very simple and I also add a screenshot for almost every step to help the non-technical users follow along. And I also avoided technical jargons that the user might not understand. Best practice for user documentation is to avoid jargon unless necessary. Keep each step focused on one action and use headings, bullet points, and numbered lists to structure the document. We also do documentation for projects like upgrading equipment like switches or computers to make everything organized and keep the team on the same page as to what you're doing. I've made a spreadsheet for my switch upgrade project to make it easier for me to track my progress and also show the team the updates. We also have a documentation for asset inventory. Assets can be hardware or software like licenses. Here is an example of our device inventory and it's important to fill out necessary information like the host name, serial number, description for the purpose of device, and the device owner. Here is an example of a knowledge base article. Knowledge base articles are written to help users and technicians resolve frequent issues or queries in a quick and simple format. And this is an example of an incident report. An incident report provides a detailed account of a critical incident, including the root cause, resolution steps, and preventative measures. So here is an incident report for a network outage. This report is very detailed and includes the affected systems, description of the incident, and the actions taken with the time frame. It also includes the root cause analysis and the resolution. This format ensures that you include all necessary details from the incident's root cause to the resolution steps while documenting lessons learned for future prevention. So when documenting, a tool that I use most of the time, especially when I need to add screenshot, is the snipping tool. And this is built in for Windows and it's just easy to take screenshots with this. So. If you're not using this and you're still using print screen and paint to do your screenshots, I highly recommend you to use this. It's so easy. You can just click on this new so you can create a screenshot in here and you can grab any size that you want in here and it automatically copies on your clipboard. So you just paste it wherever you want and also you can draw on this too if you want to add some notes for example and that also automatically copies your clipboard you don't have to save it but if you do want to save it for a specific reason you can also save it there and you can also edit in paint if you want to do more editing on it you can do more features with this snipping tool which is easy and if you also want to crop this screenshot that you took you can do it on this tool as well and for the documentation platform and software that you can use it depends on the company on what they are using based on my experience we have used confluence and sharepoint and these have version control which really helps collaborating with the team with updating the technical documents at work so that would be it for today's video i hope that you learned something if you wanted to learn more details about technical documentation you can visit the website at eCharmer.com so you can join the free course if you're interested in it and also participate in the activities there thank you so much for watching today's video i hope that you enjoy and i hope to see you guys in the next one